Collagen cross-linking is a treatment for early and moderate keratoconus that associates the riboflavin of vitamin B2 and ultraviolet line to strengthen and stabilize the biomechanical properties of the cornea and can delay or prevent corneal transplantation. We have performed 75 cases. Six cases were performed with PTK for removing the epithelium without any complications. This is a 30 years old female with a bilateral pileocid marginal degeneration with contact lens intolerance. The topography shows a typical pattern. In order to be more precise, we performed a PTK to remove the epithelium. The laser is programmed to treat 40 microns with 7.5 mm OZ and the 9.8 mm ablation. We think that in order to promote the smoother epithelial regeneration, this method is better than the mechanical scraping with a spatula, with or without previous alcohol. The post PTK pachymetry was 421 microns. Before the cross linking is done, we perform an intensity check of the output energy of the system using the UV light meter, where the values should be between 2.7 and 3.3. We use as photosensitizer riboflavin solution. It is applied on the de epithelialized cornea every 3 minutes for approximately 30 minutes. We search at the slit lamp for a complete stromal penetration and the green Tyndall phenomenon in the interior chamber. The irradiated corneal area should be limited to 8 mm. Sclera, globlet cells and limbus are not treated. After the procedure, the eye is washed with BSS and antibiotic drop is instilled. A bandage contact lens is placed over the treated eye for 72 hours or until the corneal reepithelialization is complete. The post-op treatment consisted in one antibiotic, moxifloxacin, and one NSA, meloxicam, one drop every four hours. I want to show you something. At the 24 hours post-op under fluorescent staining and cobalt light, we can see that the epithelium wasn't healing. It came to our attention that the patient didn't show any sign of pain from the time of the surgery. At the 48-hour post-op, the patient showed this biomicroscopic appearance without pain. We observed a gelatinous appearance of the corneal stroma as if it were sliding on a firm base. It had a friable consistency and a vascular sealer and perichoratic injection with signs of corneal vascularization. At the time, we thought of an infection. A culture sample was made and we started to treat with 45 antibiotics without any effect. The direct examination on culture were negative to fungus, bacteria or acanthamoeba. The patient continued with NSAIDs, lubricants and antibiotics and still no pain. Now what happened? After one week, an advance in the vascularization can be observed, with white scarring on the central cornea. Suspecting on a corneal melting, we decided to perform a penetrating keratoplasty with a complete and stable re-epithelialization three days after surgery, thus suggesting an absence of a pre-existing neurotrophic mechanism. The patient didn't have any active ocular disease, history of herpetic keratitis, diabetes, pregnancy, immunocompromised or any other exclusion criteria for cross-linking. The only hint was the absence of pain during and after the procedure, which is an atypical sign since these kind of procedures show pain, as described in this paper. Yeah, well, I think we'd be better off all around if we put our cards on the table. Several complications have been described in the literature for cross-linking, PTK and NSAIDs that can be applied in this case. Even though there are several complications related to the cross-linking procedure, such as sterile infiltrates or corneal stromal scars, there is no evidence that this severe complication was related directly to the cross-linking procedure. We know that during the epithelial healing, the cornea is more vulnerable to melting and infection. There are a few papers showing complications with prolonged use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs. Toxic keratolysis and corneal melts are associated with upregulation of metalloproteinases or MMP at the stroma. We also have to bear in mind that there is no study about the pharmacokinetics of any drop of NSAIDs, vehicle or preservatives in close contact with a bandaged contact lens, so that in a short time of exposure to multiple chemicals this may be potentially harmful. In regards to the PTK procedure, there is evidence that points that the laser may cause a thin zone of tissue necrosis. It may also be that the cornea itself was more susceptible to damage than most corneas, Lanners and co-workers concluded that the rapidly progressive keratolysis is a potential complication of the PTK. 
You see, I've got to know all that happened so I can be sure the parts that don't fit are covered up. After analyzing all this data, we examined the left eye of the patient in search for more clues. We performed ORA, stesiometry, pentacam, specular biomicroscopy, OCT, confocal tomography and lacrimal studies. None of the results of these studies would have changed our treatment criteria. The anatomopathological examination showed a loss of the mobile layer in stroma, and inflammatory infiltrates associated with stromal necrosis characterized by the absence of keratocytes and stromal edema. In this picture we can see, in stroma, the transition between irradiated area and absence of keratocytes to the right, and some activated keratocytes on the lesion border to the left. Deeper area with leukocyte infiltrates, posterior stroma and decimate without alterations. The anatomopathological study showed that the deeper layers in the coronal periphery were free of necrosis. You've forgotten one thing. Me. Me diagnosticaron keratocona. Bueno, para operarme del perlinking. Este, a mí no me dolió. Y a los dos días de la operación me levanté y tenía el ojo más blanco. Yo no quiero saber, este... The mechanism by which cornea stromal melting or necrosis occurred was probably multifactorial. Pre-existing conditions may have predisposed the cornea to stromal melting. Any of these procedures, either cross-linking with the use of bandage contact lenses, PTK or the use of NSAIDs, may have acted singly or synergistically to cause this severe complication. After studying the case, we consider that the absence of pain and discomfort are very important warning signs to be aware of, with or without Adelaide epithelial healing. We strongly recommend early post-op controls no more than eight hours after the cross-linking procedure. Hey,